Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Ah. Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back in these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Aw, hmm. oh, Dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just... You're my little girl. It's going to be weird not having you around. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Yeah. Of course. Are you going to be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. Right. A dog? Right. Forget art school. I'll stay with a dog. Is that what it's going to take? Yeah. Medium-sized dog. Handkerchief around the neck. I get to name it. That's what it'll cost for me to give up on my dreams. I'm a woman of simple wants and needs. Well, a dog is a lot cheaper than college. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slide through the mail slot. Speaking of college... Yeah. Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. Yeah. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it! Huh? But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Mm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. Not a big deal. Oh. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay. Mm. I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application. Blah, blah, blah. Um, we... Oh. Her face drops. Regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. <gasps> Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. Mm. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just want to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? Hmm. I'm fine. Really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Huh. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and Emma P are sleeping over tonight. Ugh. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have a n the new place to yourself. <laughs> yeah? What are your plans? <laughs> Quick! Think of plans! I am secretly the mayor of this town. Gotta attend the union meeting. I'm going clubbing. Wow, okay. I'm going clubbing. Screw it, I wanna see what he says. Gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves. The lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, the ones all the kids these days are doing. Mm. Alright, but I'm not gonna come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Go to bed. Go out and watch the game? Nice. Mm. Which game? You know... The game. The one that's on tonight. Aww. The game. On TV. That's somewhere other than he- ah. Okay, cool. While you do that, I'm gonna go- I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging with the wrong crowd. <laughs> Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white collar crime by this point. Maybe money laundering at the least. I'm a street rat, Pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? Uh, yes, Dad. Just making sure. <laughs> I give her a pat on the head. Yeah. Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? Dad. No, making fun of sports is played out. <laughs> Alright then. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right, Mr. Vega. Oh, I remember him. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. Practice makes permanent? 
Wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and a man still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS of my phone. So I'm just going to pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go this way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance, could it be? A big, burned-out neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? Alright, it'll do. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool ball sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. I like the fact that it's just a beer with a capital B. <laughs> Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly coloured mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favoured te team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with the fan of the opposing team. Several people in the bar are wearing their distinctive colours of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanour that, like me, their passion for the team is all in good fun. A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Hmm? Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? Uh, no, I actually just moved to this part of town today. I'm Killian, by the way. Ah. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Hey. Oh, I love that team. I also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Wow! Why did I just say that? Holy shit. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh... Ah. Buy a gal a drink? <sighs> uh, well, it's kind of rude not to, but also I think you've had enough. Uh, maybe some other time? Ugh. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points. A little too close to what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team- I love how beautifully vague this is. Putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team! It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, we must be rooting for different teams. My opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based upon our win-loss record, I'd say my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. Conversation ends there. We both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers, rip cheers? Cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us based on mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender, who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Killian. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Robert chuckles. Oh. She's a peach. Well, you pick the best bar in town. Slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? Nah, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the bar. Hey. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. Uh -huh. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. Mm. You like shots? Uh... <laughs> oh, really? That last one? Ooh, shots fired. I don't like him. I like shots. <laughs> Thank you. Rob and to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one uh. to me. Here's to your health. You don't do shots of whiskey? 
What are you doing? That's that's an abomination. Anyway, we take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. Okay, Killian, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Ooh, compliment his cool leather jacket, his rugged good looks, or his hand tattoo. Let's go with his tattoo. That seems like a cool thing to do with this cool guy. I like your tattoo. What does it mean? It's... Oh, dear. A reminder. I think I did that wrong. I wait for him to elaborate, but it seems like he's done talking. Man, this guy is mysterious. And cool. Oh. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert takes us to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Trying to make friends, running from my problems. My daughter kicked me out of the house. Let's do that. <laughs> Not like forever. She was having a sleepover with her friends. Hmm. Family type, huh? Single dad. Uh -huh. huh. He gets up. Oh. Be right back. Got a pat on my nose. Really? I've never heard a guy say that. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha, <laughs> I guess so. I gotta admit, Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. Oh. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. Mm. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Great place to be. Good neighbours. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop, and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Killian. So are we doing this, or what? What? I... You know, do you want to come inside, or not? Hey yo! A wave of realization rushes over me. I blush. Lay it on smooth. Smile and nod. Or oh, no, thank you. Damn it, man. I'm going to smile and nod. Let's do it. I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, wait, what? He pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. Holy shit, we're less than an hour, well, we're about an hour into the game. Come on. Robert, what? <laughs> hey yo. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the stairs and into what I assume is his bedroom, but it's so dark that I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. He kisses me again and I can hear him shucking off his jacket. I clumsily take off mine too. His hands roam down my chest and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, uh, don't normally... Do this. Do you want to stop? Oh man! Uh. Uh. No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Robert continues to unbuckle my belt and guides me to the bed. Let's have some fun. Damn. Okay then. Sunlight streams in between the slats of the blinds. My head is pounding. I really overdid it last night. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house. Or my new house. Oh. Right. <laughs> I look around for Robert, but find myself alone. Hello? There's a clatter from the bathroom and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. Ugh. You should go. That's certainly not what I was expecting. Well, uh, talk to you later? Mm. Robert cracks a smile. Sure, your clothes are over there. <laughs> wow, I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright. I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home when I suddenly remember... Amanda! Oh no, you have... Oh no! You have a meeting with her English teacher. I rush back home through the door open. Something smells delicious. Amanda! <sighs> Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. I also got an achievement just then, by the way, called Bad Dad. <laughs> okay. Oh man, I was kind of hoping you'd gotten kidnapped and I was going to have to come rescue you. No, I uh, made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. Where are the Emmas? Ah. They left a little while ago. 
Oh, you guys have fun? Yeah, I watched some movies, ate some snacks, stole a car, you know, usual sleepover stuff. You teens and your larceny. So, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Well, there's hash browns and eggs and bacon. Can I... Aww. Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. <laughs> She's a good kid. My head throbs. Oh, I gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last night. Ooh, somebody's hungover. Father of the year. You wouldn't happen to have any aspirin or... I got just the thing. Hang on. Amanda runs the fridge and pulls out a jar of pickles. Amanda, what? Yeah. Drink this. The pickle juice? Ah. Yep. It's what I used once, uh, would assume someone would use. I would also assume that it works pretty well. Mm. Although I've never tried it before. And won't try it. Obviously. Amanda Ann! <laughs> Who raised you? Amanda Ann! Give her a stern yet resigned side eye. Who raised you? Um, you did? Right. Um, do as I say, not as I do. You got it. This better work. I down a sip of the tart yeah. juice. No, no, more than that. Way more than that. Whoa. I mean, I assume. Hmm. Watch it, you. I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and dunking several pieces of bacon in runny egg yolk, I'm starting to feel a little better. Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Well, I gotta get to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega, okay? He said it was important. Love ya. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. Always do. We do our secret handshake. The fact that they have one is awesome. And she's off. I get a little work done at home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. Already? I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. Still a little hungover. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They gave me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. Oh man, this is going to be bad. I'm meeting one of her teachers and I'm kind of hungover. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I swear a youth, a youth with a capital Y, standing at his locker and approaching for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Okay, wise guy, you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine, up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. Head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low-rent Gerard Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Hmm? Lucien, don't you have a third period to get to? <sighs> Lucien? Jesus Christ. Fine, Mr. Vega. Oh. Wow. Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not oh. cool. You must be Killian. This period is almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm? Mr. Vega leads me and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Oh. Alright, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Sullinger's Catcher in the Rye? Hmm. Yes, Colin? Colin stands up and does a thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Ah. The whole class erupts in laughter. Oh. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Ah. Now, Holden Caulfield is an unreliable narrator in the sense that the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 of your textbook. Nobody's listening. Oh. Or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? <sighs> Both. You know, budget cuts. Right. Ah. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Ah. Please, call me Hugo. Hugo. Hmm. 
I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. What's going on? I don't know. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk this up to senioritis, but... This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. <sighs> I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, we just moved. She's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. Well, I don't know that for sure. We just moved? Well, we just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. Hmm. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you as a great deal. She values you a great deal. Not as a great deal, but probably the same. But appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road... Uh... I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Hey. Anytime. On my way out, I stopped thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Ah. Yes? Did you ever catch that, Rye? Ah. Yes. <laughs> Apparently, that was a cool thing to say. I leave, my leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she'd appreciate a ride home. Maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Huh. Pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Baker and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. So you talked about Mario Batalia the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Huh. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. We can make something at home. Let's go to, the, go to the mall food court. Does that sound good to you? Hmm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can't a dad take his daughter to the mall? Hmm. Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. Uh. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay, but also sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective, because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. Have you been reading my tweets? Sorry, my mother is calling me. One second. Real life goals. I will see you guys again soon.